all the Salt Lake drama you missed. And somehow Whoopi Goldberg is pissed. Virtual reality. Hi, I'm Danny. And I'm Evan. And Salt Lake City is back, people, and they wasted no time, both the ladies and the editors, getting to the juicy drama. Oh my God, yes, there is suddenly a chill in the air because there is so much drama to unpack, so much insane developments in the lives of these Salt Lake City women. I love the little package they did at the beginning of the episode where it's like 2019 versus 2022. There are so many changes. We got Jen Shaw bragging about making millions (laughs) through director response marketing. I make millions it's Cut truly how it started how it's going <laughs> yeah no one totally. everyone is in chaos everyone is in ruins not only jen shaw she's not only in legal and financial ruins and probably maybe gonna go to jail but yeah. there's uh whitney and heather who uh, hit a hit a little bump in their friendship and then obviously meredith and lisa's friendship is imploding even further but then there's new alliances between meredith and jen cheers here's to a new year and new us I will drink to that. And Meredith and Heather. And then, you know, most shockingly, in my opinion, is Whitney and Lisa. That is crazy to me. When I saw it, because they to me are oil and vinegar, you know what I mean? Or do those go together? Oil and water. They're oil and water, (laughs) but they turned into oil and vinegar with a bread basket because they are just now (laughs) thick as thieves. And it is kind of interesting because you see like, because my favorite thing on the show or one of them was Whitney and Heather's relationship. And that being like, pulled apart. This is what's so interesting about the Salt Lake City ladies, because on Beverly Hills, you have the Fox Five or whatever the hell they want to call themselves. Jersey, you know, it's Margaret, Melissa, Jackie against the world. Salt Lake, you never know who is with who and what and where. They keep everybody on their toes. I feel like even the producers of the show are like, wait, you're fighting with what? (laughs) <laughs> they're probably so confused i mean the the episode started out with like a big bang just seeing meredith and jen chilling in a hot tub bottle of wine drink each. yeah <laughs> yes and then immediately we get into these affair rumors and these business rumors about lisa barlow so like you said danny these women are truly wasting no time whatsoever well, and i love what that too is jen is wasting no time having the time of her life despite everything she's trying to light a fire she's throwing a birthday bash for the coach her perseverance i'm just kind of like because if i was her i would just be in a ball on the ground in a circle and all that stuff really falling apart but she just seems to be coming back stronger than ever and one thing about Jen Shaw is she is very resourceful. It doesn't matter that she might be going to jail. It doesn't matter that she is owing millions in restitution. She is going to throw a party for Coach Shaw come hell or high water. And she pulls it off thanks to the new friend of Angie K, who has a beautiful home, by the way. Oh. The views were just, I mean, stunning. Go she really pulled through. The views were beautiful and really inspiring people. Um, it inspired Lisa to... I don't know if apologize is the right word, but I would say to monologue. Uh, To to monologue? Yeah. (laughs) She literally had a Juilliard audition with Seth. Yeah. She was like, kind of like La La Land, like my aunt used to live in Paris. She was like, I have things to do. Like really was giving it to me. I have my stuff going on too, Seth. Nobody knows what goes on for me. I feel like in that situation, I would be the type of person to run away because I do not do confrontation well. So props to Lisa for actually trying to say something. And even though Meredith wasn't really feeling it, Seth entertained her for a minute and Lisa got to monologue for him and it felt a little awkward and a little cringe, but maybe set the stage for a reconciliation she probably will resist in talking about meredith's family for at least a few months after this so they can just go from there but i don't th- from what we see it seems meredith is not wasting any time talking about lisa which yeah will ignite some fires but she is definitely talking more and more to her good friend jen shaw and she supported jen uh in in the lead up to jen reversing her previous plea saying that she is guilty of defrauding elderly people in a widespread telemarketing scheme Mm -hmm. and her comments to us about why she chose to stick by jen's side caught the attention of none other than Whoopi Goldberg and the ladies of The View. And they had thoughts and feelings. Oh, they shared their view. Meredith Marks says she's still sticking by her. Take a look. It was surprising for sure that she took a plea because if anything, I thought she would at least go to trial. 
But, you know, hopefully we get to see the backstory on how that all unfolded. You guys are still close, though, which is good? Or That's good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, Jen and I are still speaking. And, um, you know, more than ever, I think she probably needs some support from people around her. Well, maybe the old folks that she defrauded might also need some support around them as well. But who am I? (laughs) Not only are we obsessed with The View this week, I mean, every week, but we are also so obsessed with Heather from Salt Lake City because I think we would all be best friends. Like, I want to just hang out with her all the time. You know what I mean? Oh, totally. I would uh, take up room and board at Beauty Lab and Laser for sure. Not only because I love Heather Gay, but because I love a good injectable. But what I appreciated about Heather is that with us, she dished it all. And she, like Meredith, is also sticking by Jen Shaw's side, even after the reversed plea situation. So she told us about that. She told us about her relationship with Whitney and, you know, what the future of bad weather looks like. And it was it was a really interesting chat. This is your third season, Heather Gay. A lot happens. New friendships, new feuds, a black eye. How are you feeling now that the show is back in action? This season was a lot different. You know, season one, it was all new. Season two, we were kind of getting in the groove, but then Jen got arrested and it just, I don't think anyone was prepared for that, you know? And now season three, it feels like everything is up in the air. So many developments. I think the craziest development is this apparent descent of your friendship with Whitney Rose. I mean, did you ever expect that your relationship would implode the way it appears to implode? Heather, you look like somebody locked you. Well, maybe somebody did. I I know it. It appears like there's been a major implosion, but like I. Um, I hope that's not the case. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I, uh, I love Whitney. She is my cousin. She's bad weather. So you still love Whitney and that brings me so much peace. I mean, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, if there's anything you know about me, it's that I'm like a stage five clinger. I don't give up on friendships ever, even when they're trying to wrench themselves from me. But I, I don't know how this season's gonna play out and I'm nervous about it, but I love Whitney and I have, I'm attached to bad weather. I have no intention of like disrupting my life any more than it's already been disrupted. I know, cause that was the thing. Cause on the first episode, I just loved like, cause there's so much drama that goes on in the show. And of course we love the drama, but watching you just like at her house, like pr- I was like, this is just so sweet. Like you guys seem like you're such pals. So I was like, I really hope they can work through it. And I mean, you guys like almost immediately went on a trip after that. So I, you guys had a lot of time to work through it, I hope. Yeah, and I think there's real love there. And I, um, I, I hope there's real love there, but you know, I'm learning in this process that like my version of friendship and events isn't always everybody else's. It's interesting too, because I saw on a recent interview, Whitney said that like, even when talking about her new friendship with Lisa and everything, how they're really getting buddy buddy, that before she was, she felt like she was looking at Lisa through someone else's lens. And do you think she meant that she was looking at her through like your lens or what's happening with that? I mean, if she's referring to me, that's flattery. (laughs) But I don't, you know, I don't see that. I really don't. I see like she's, I feel like she's been her own independent thinker all along and had her own opinions. And we've never really, I've never thought of our friendship and relationship as an alliance. You know, I, I heard that they are saying shifting alliances and I never thought of our friendship as an alliance. It was just a friendship. And, you know, I hoped it would last forever. Do you think that Lisa and Whitney's relationship is more of an alliance or do you think there is a real friendship there? Because at one point those girls wanted nothing to do with each other. I know, <laughs> for a long point. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very strange to me. And it's, you know, I want resolve for everyone. So I'm happy that everyone's getting along and like figuring out their way. But I, you know, obviously, yeah. I mean, I've been living it and this is new to me. And I would think that we're way past alliances at this point. You know, this is, this is like friendship. This isn't survivor <sighs> and I would never want to be in a relationship that was anything less than just a genuine appreciation and love for each other. I mean, I don't have enough capacity to be strategic with the people I hang out with. Like, I just want to be loved and love in return. Well, speaking of Jen, 
I do have to ask, since she has admitted her guilt, how has that impacted the current state of your friendship? Listen, I've, I've had prison boyfriends before. I know, I know the whole routine. I'm not worried about that. You were um, born for this. Yeah, I know, I was born for this. Like <laughs> Love after lockup, Heather and Jen, yes. <laughs> love after lockup, just even talking about it, it's just devastating. I think it was so devastating and it's been really difficult, but I'm just still her friend and hopeful for her and her family. And, you know, when they talk about star power or star quality, and it's just kind of this ephemeral, intangible thing, but when someone has it, you cannot rip it from them. You can Mm -hmm. pour anything on them, scandal and, you know, horrible things, and they still shine. And that is, you know, both the blessing and curse of Jen, you know? 